Hey, Doc. Good to see you. Hey, Doc. Good Hey, Doc, good morning. Quick question for you. Before you guys got to Orlando, you talked about how this was going to be about, about mental strength for the team and for yourself. To this point, have there been any surprises which you've kind of had to navigate and work your way through uh, mentally? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I guess. I mean, not having everybody is, I, I would say, would be, uh, I don't know if it was a surprise, it just happens. Uh, but mentally, you have to get through it, you know? Um, I think if I was a player, it, it, you know, you, you come in and, and, you know, you don't have everyone. And then, you know, for most of the camp, we only had 10 guys. And so there's no off in camp in practice. You know, usually you have 15 guys, you can take a break in a drill or in scrimmages. There was no substitutions, you know. And so we had to adjust our, our you know, practice shorter, uh, do things less, put in less. Uh, and mentally as a player, I, I would imagine that that would, probably frustrate you a little bit, but our guys have handled it great. Okay, next we're going to go down to Orlando with Rachel. Should you just show up and get the first question? <laughs> um, what do you feel like putting together your degree? Well, that's a good question. I think everyone's chemistry is probably on every team. Uh, you know, it's funny, I was talking to a coach unnamed, but he said either the chemistry has gotten way better or we hate each other, <laughs> you know. But I think for the most part, uh, I, I can't imagine someone's team not growing uh, in this. Like the guys, especially the teams that have had all their guys, uh, because it is a village, you know, that you're living in. It's an NBA village. It's the greatest, greatest, like, you know, superstar basketball camp that you could have, this is like a dream, you know, if you look at it that way. And uh, so I, I would say uh, chemistry wise, it's probably been great for everybody. Yeah, that's included. Yeah, we've had a lot of guys missing. And, and so that hasn't been the fun part. But the guys who are here, uh, you know, we remember Reggie was new, uh, Marcus was new, you know, and so they've, they've been here for the most part. And I think it's been good for everybody. All right, next we're gonna go to Miriam. Morning, Doc. Hey. Morning. Hey, so what do you wanna see from your guys in the next eight games, the, the guys who are there? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, just getting better each game, uh, growing, uh, getting to a peak conditioning level. Um, it's, it's very important, right? Uh, like you gotta get through these eight games. By the end of the eight games, you go into the playoffs. When you go into the playoffs, you're usually at your peak place, uh, especially conditioning and, and and rhythm and timing. And that would be my goal. Obviously, you want to win games. But uh, if you told me we didn't, but when we started the playoffs, we were at the peak in each of those places, I would tell you, I'd take that right now. Okay, we're going to go to two in Orlando. We'll start with Taylor, then Kyle. Yeah. So I know I see your hat saying vote. Um, you guys have a lot of different symbolism and signage on the coaches, shoes, hats, and everything like that. So what have you kind of learned about yourself as a coach during this time and what it's important for you to do for your guys and for your assistant coaches? Well, for me as a coach, I've learned two things. Number one, I've always been extremely political, uh, but not enough. You know, um, you know, uh, we had a great speaker uh, recently talk to our team and you know, one of the, he said, I don't know how anyone can say that they're not involved in politics because politics are involved in your life, daily lives uh, every day, whether you want it or not. Now, decisions are being made whether you're involved or not. So why wouldn't you be involved? That's the first thing. And the second thing, um, I hate to say it, I think I'm getting old. And uh, I think I should listen to the young people. You know, I think uh, this movement uh, is really driven by the young. And so my job is to inspire them to vote and get involved and then back up and let them do the talking and us do the listening. Uh, I think that's very important in this movement. If we can do that, uh, then we don't just have young people involved in politics now, but we have people involved in politics for life. And I think that's very important for us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, sorry to switch back to basketball. But Why? Uh, I know, right? <laughs> um, but 
you, do you feel like your team at this point is dealing with or is, is it a harder challenge just what's happened in the last three weeks with guys going here, guys going there, there and you haven't played together much? Yeah, I would say the second. I mean, the hiatus was the hiatus. I think, um, you know, it's affected us because of what's happened. You know, um, you know, human life has happened. You know, we've had a lot of things that, that, have, that's, that have happened. So, um, because I thought during the hiatus, our guys did a great job uh, as far as conditioning and, and things like that. And then we get here and then things happen. Guys, you know, have the virus, guys have family stuff. And so you have all this, you know, what I call clutter uh, in your lives and it's part of life. And so we've had to deal with that. Uh, but adversity is not all bad. You know, it, it really isn't. Adversity is not bad. Uh, it, 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 you're going to go through hard stuff. And if it's at the beginning, then let's do it now. Okay. And then we're going to take two more questions. We'll start with Ohm, followed by Andrew. Good morning, Doc. Uh, you were just talking about uh, how life has just kind of come come into the play here, and I was wondering, Lawrence and Winger amassed this deep roster. How have you seen team depth kind of be tested early by just unpredictable things that can happen in the bubble? Like, have you learned that maybe or gotten a preview that maybe this deep roster is built for things that could happen inside this bubble that you can't foresee? Yeah, well, a deep roster is built for that, and, and we've done that now. When you have five and six guys out at one time, that's that's asking too much on any roster. Uh, so uh, by the time the games start, we won't have that many out, but we'll have we'll have you know maybe two to three guys, key guys out, uh, and that's asking a lot. Having said that, that doesn't stop us from believing we're going to win every game. Uh, we have great confidence. Andrew, hey doctors. Two quick ones. One, you said that Pat Beverly was a maybe uh, after the last scrimmage. Is there any update on him? And then with, with Lou and the possibility of Trez not being there Thursday, they have been such a vital part of everything you guys do off the bench. How yeah. do you account for those two being gone with just rotations? And how do you compensate? Well, no one's going to replace those two. Uh, we know that. Uh, and so we're going to have to try to make it up in other ways uh, with a different rotation for sure. Uh, and Pat's probably been upgraded to a maybe. All right, have a good practice. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs>